Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Live Love Leather and today we're going to be talking about the different types of veg tan leather we're going to be using and also how to case leather. So stay tuned and let's get in the shop. Hey, now that we're back in the shop, as I said before, today we're going to be talking about some leather and about how to case it and what casing is. But first, like this video and subscribe below. Don't worry, I'll wait. All right, now that we got that taken care of, I do want to throw out a shout out to Angelica Bloomfield, who was our first subscriber. Go check her videos out. I'll drop her link in the description box below. Check her out if you're interested in the, the extreme Mustang makeover type deal. So to dive right in, leather. And today we're going to be talking about specifically vegetable tan leather. And if you're interested in that process and how that works, go ahead and uh, do some research on it. We're not going to dive into that today. The main thing you need to know is I use veg tan leather because it is very versatile in the projects I make. And to start off with it, we're going to start with the thinnest one. And this is about two ounces. Now, in Europe, they measure it by millimeters, but I'm an American, so we're going to talk about ounces today because that's what I know. And this type of veg tan leather, this is actually sheep, it's not cow, but it is great for doing linings, interiors, things like that, real simple. And next we're going to step it up a little thicker to the four or five ounce leather. And this leather in particular, I like to use for all my wallets, my belts. You can get away with a little bit thicker leather on some projects. Um, and you can also, if you're lining it and sewing it together, you can use a thinner leather or a thicker leather to make this a little bit nicer. So the next thickness of leather we're going to be talking about is going to be like that eight, nine ounce range. Now, this is quite a bit thicker and it is great leather for working with on spur straps or tack, breast collars, things that need a little bit more durability in the long run. So that's going to be more your eight or nine ounce leather. You don't want to try to make a, a wallet out of this, but if you're only making an unlined belt, you definitely want to step up to a thicker leather so the belt's more durable. And the last piece of leather we're going to talk about, this is a 13, 15 ounce saddle skirting. As you can tell, quite thick. And most of the beginners aren't going to be working with something quite this thick. Um, we use it more for the utilitarian saddles, everyday saddles. So that's kind of the, the thickness. So that the leather and the thickness. For most of the projects, I'll definitely let you know what thickness leather I'm using to do the project. So definitely be aware of that. The next thing we're going to be talking about today is casing leather. Now casing leather is the act of adding moisture to the leather. So when you apply your stamp to it, the stamp stays and you also get a burnish. The first way we're going to talk about is just using a basic spray bottle like this. Cheap $1 spray bottle. They make nicer ones with finer mists and cool things like that. So how does casing work? All casing is, is adding moisture to the leather. So what you do is you take your piece of leather, we'll use the eight or nine ounce here, um, and you spray it. And then you'll see now that it's quite a bit darker than it originally was. And then you just let it sit. And that moisture is going to soak in there. And when it becomes, when the top here becomes more natural colored, then you can really start working with it. And when you're doing the spray bottle casing, that's a very good way of adding moisture to your project while you're actually working on the project if your leather's starting to dry out a little bit more. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how I like to do things. It's quicker than soaking it, but it allows more moisture content to sit in the leather, in my opinion. So to do this, we're going to grab a bucket. All right, so we got our bucket and it's just filled with water. 
That's all that's in there. That's all I need. So all you're going to do with this type of casing is you're just going to dip it in there just like that. And you can see how it changed colors. And you can see how the moisture is kind of soaking in. For a, a tooling project like this, you can see the splotches on the back. I don't like that, so I would dip it again and let those splotches go away. So now all you do is you put it to the side and wait. And you're going to wait till that, that natural color comes back to the top and then you'll have a pretty good moisture content. So the next way we're going to talk about casing leather is actually the more appropriate way of casing leather. I don't do this typically because it takes too long, but we're going to go through the steps. We're going to go into my house here where we have a sink and kind of film it and show you what has to happen there. So let's go in the house here and see how to do this. Hey guys, we're here at the house now. I'm going to show you real quick how we soak leather in kind of the process that that goes through to properly case leather. So here we go. Here I got my leather. Here we have the sink. First things first, put water in the sink. Now, it doesn't really matter if it's warm water or cold water, I typically do just warm, lukewarm water. So, with enough water in the sink to submerge the leather, we just go ahead, dunk it until the bubbles stop. So you can still see some bubbling. That's pretty good though. I think that'll do for what we're doing here. So uh, grab it out of the sink, get some saran wrap. Wrap that up nice and tight. And then we just take it to the fridge. And then you usually let it sit in there overnight, pull it out the next day, undo the saran wrap, and then just let it kind of air dry until that top layer becomes natural looking again, and then you're ready to start working. Also, if you have any questions about any of this, just drop a comment in the comments below. I'll read them and I'll respond. And if I get enough questions, if I miss something because I do that, I'll make another video specifically on that topic.